Good evening to everyone. I'm Minakshi Dang, Assistant Secretary, Training Unit, CBSC. I welcome Dr. Sandeep Kumar Jain, sir, Joint Secretary, Training Unit, CBSC. Our guest for today, Dr. Sarda Chandrasekhan, Madam, Academic Director and Head of Institution, Whitefield Global School, Bangalore. Shrimati Tushara, Madam, Under Secretary, Training Unit, CBSC. Shrimati Sudesh Gulia, Madam, Under Secretary, IT Training Unit, CBSC. All the principals and teachers of the esteemed schools, all the COE heads of the board, and all the staff of COEs and training unit for today's webinar on the topic, Promoting Use of Libraries and Cultivating Reading Habits. Uh, due to some exigency of work, Dr. Ram Shankar, sir, Director Training, could not be with us for today's webinar, but yes, he has expressed his best wishes for today's webinar. So now I would invite Dr. Sandeep Kumar Jansar, Joint Secretary Training Unit, to highlight us for the need and importance of the webinar. So, thank you, Minakshi. Sabhi ko mera namaskar. Aaj ki webinar ka jo hamara title hai. वो है प्रमोटिंग लाइब्रेरीज एंड कल्टीवेटिंग रीडिंग हैबिट्स यदि हम देखें तो रीडिंग हैबिट्स को लेकर लोग आपसे बोल सकते हैं कि सोशल मीडिया है लोग आपसे बोल सकते हैं कि इंटरनेट है मोबाइल है टैब है वाई लाइब्रेरी क्यों प्रमोट कर लें लाइब्रेरी को तो एक छोटी सी घटना मैं आपसे साझा करना चाहूंगा आज से कुछ साल पहले की बात है मैंने आ, मेरे एक फ्रेंड ने एक मैसेज को फॉरवर्ड किया तो मैंने उसको बोला कि क्या आपने इसका अथेंटिसिटी चेक किया तो उसने जो मुझे बोला दैट वाज वेरी वेरी डेंजरस उसने बोला कि जिस किसी ने भी ये लिखा होगा उसने बहुत सोच समझ के लिखा होगा वो कोई इंटेलिजेंट आदमी होगा वो एक आदमी ऐसा होगा जिसके पास विजडम होगा इट वॉज वेरी डेंजरस आप एक अननोन एक एनानमस राइटर पे ब्लाइंडली बिलीव कर रहे हो देर इज नो रेफरेंस दैट क्लेम वो 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 थॉट कहां से आया वो किस पेज पे लिखा हुआ है किस बुक में लिखा हुआ है क्या कोई वो एक्ट का हिस्सा है वो कहीं से भी उस मैसेज में नहीं था सीधा एक थॉट सीधा एक फीलिंग और उस फीलिंग को एक्सप्रेस करने वाले कुछ 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 सेंटेंसेस यहां पे मैं आपको बोलना चाहूंगा कि यहां जरूरत महसूस होती है लाइब्रेरी की जब अथेंटिसिटी की जरूरत है जब रेफर करने की जरूरत है एक सोशल मीडिया के मैसेज पे यदि ये लिखा हुआ है कि ये दिस बुक रेफर टेकन फ्रॉम दिस बुक पेज नंबर फोर्टी फाइव एंड दिस बुक वॉज पब्लिश इन टू That is okay. I can go to the library. I can check on page number forty-three and in in the edition of two thousand thirteen. So I can check the authenticity. Or libraries, me, भी आपको देखना होता है कि books किस तरह की हैं, किस तरह के material को आप prefer कर रहे हो. कई books आपको इस तरह की भी मिल जाती हैं. जिनमें ना कोई साइटेशन होता है किसी तरह का कोई रेफरेंस नहीं होता है और एब्रप्टली कुछ क्लेम कर दिए जाते हैं तो ऐसी किताबों से भी बचना है ऐसे सोशल मीडिया से भी बचना है ऐसे इंटरनेट से भी बचना है और अथेंटिक इंफॉर्मेशन लेके आनी है और खुद की रीडिंग हैबिट्स को कल्टीवेट करना है ताकि आप लाइफ लॉन्ग लर्नर रहो ताकि आपको किसी और की आगे जरूरत ना पड़े आपके पोस्ट रिटायरमेंट तक के टाइम में भी आप सीखते रहो नया स्किल डेवलप करते रहो आगे बढ़ते रहो और दूसरों के लिए भी रास्ता दिखाते रहो सो so, ये आ, मेरा आ, यहाँ पे सबमिशन था लाइब्रेरीज मेरे लिए दुनिया के सर्वश्रेष्ठ 
जगहों में से एक है सो थैंक यू वेरी मच डॉक्टर सारदा फॉर एक्सेप्टिंग आर इनविटेशन फॉर दिस वेबिनार थैंक यू वेरी मच नो मीनाक्षी Thank you, sir, for your enriching words. I'm sure definitely everyone will keep that in mind. Uh, now, before I invite Dr. Sarda Chandrasekhar, madam, I would like to give a brief introduction of her. Ma'am has a total of 41 years of work experience, including 30 plus years experience as principal and director in premier institutions such as DPS Bazaar. principal of air force school coimbatore principal of st anne's bangalore principal of bharti vidyapeet in navi mumbai she is also a recipient of many awards and is currently academic director and head of institution whitefield global school bangalore karnataka so i would now request ma'am to please give us an insight on promoting the use of libraries to cultivate reading habits Thank you, Meenakshi, and uh, respected Sandeep Kumar Jain Sahab. Thank you very much for inviting me and uh, giving me this opportunity. And uh, whatever, to my best of ability, I will be doing this job. And good evening to all those uh, people who are listening. Thank you very much for being here. I hope I'll be doing some kind of a justice to whatever I need to do. And I'm known for my storytelling uh, abilities, so I'll start with the story. Uh, it seems once upon a time there was a there was a doctor. Those days, it, those doctors who followed the Charaka Samhita and Sushruta Samhita, very nice doctor. He started his career and he was quite well known. Then he became the resident doctor of a kingdom, the local kingdom, and everybody respected him. Over a period of time, he was known for his hastavasi that he is a very good doctor. And one day. the queen was pregnant and he was the one who was uh, consulting that pregnant queen and her delivery time came and to his uh, shock he understood it's going to be a very tough delivery and it may be a breech baby it may be a tough one so he went to the king and he told the sir uh, we may have to do a little bit of a operation okay there is sushrutha samhita i will use that and uh, she'll be very safe don't worry sir the king said nothing doing no knife on my wife and uh, there should not be any operation but my wife and the child both have to be healthy safe they have to be alive nothing must happen it's your responsibility otherwise your head will be hung here so now the doctor is quite worried because there is a problem he knows that there is a problem he did not know what to do then he went back and forth and he discussed with the midwives and then he went back and he was very upset that at one more there is one more day for the due date and uh, he was very upset he started thinking about what to do suddenly he recalled what his guru told him when he handed over the entire gurukulam to him and when he told that he is the heir apparent for the gurukul he said that whenever you are in crisis don't forget to open this trunk which i am leaving here which this man has forgotten over past 20 25 years he never touched it so he went there he opened it and he saw a lot of those palm leaves scriptures written a lot of things he said uh, as usual guru wants me to read all these things and uh, with a reluctance you know because i am a good doctor why should i read all this he started reading when he started reading those uh, things one after other suddenly something happened to him he kept everything there and he rushed to the palace he called the midwife he said that tomorrow i want you to do 1 2 3 4 5 things okay so she said okay she was quite amused why this man came running and next day the pains began and the now what the midwife started doing she took actually the castor oil heated up the castor oil applied to her palms and she started pressing nicely in a circular motion on the tummy of the of the pregnant uh, i mean of the lady slowly 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 it was a very cold evening in fact some mid winter evening extremely cold it was there was a snowing outside and the doctor came and he saw that the baby's feet are ready to come out when the turning is happening the midwife is finding it difficult what he took is he went out he brought a little bit of piece of snow with him and 
he just, just touched the feet of the little one, the feet which were coming out. The baby pulled the feet inside because it was extremely cold. And exactly that time, the midwife was turning the tummy slightly with the hands. She was massaging the tummy. And like a miracle, the baby's position changed and it became a normal delivery. The, the king was very happy. Everybody was happy. And this particular doctor, he cried. He said, if at all, I had read this few years ago, I would not have operated many of my other patients whom I have done. That's the value of reference, actually. That's the reason I'm taking this session. Normally, as teachers, as a school, as grown-ups also, we don't go to the libraries, we don't touch the books, we don't read. And suddenly, when we are in crisis, it is only this reading which helps us because there are so many experienced people who have done a lot of research and they have written books. All we need to do is put them all together, spend some time reading, spend some time understanding and then implementing. So let us start this journey of whatever little I know about promoting the use of libraries and cultivating the reading habits. I called this session as creating a library which is called a wonderland okay because for me anytime library is a wonderland so welcome you all to that so why do i call it a wonderland this is one place which takes us transforms us into a wonderful imaginative creative world when you are reading a book you visualize all that when you are reading it takes you into the world of that book and you are there and it is your friend. You will friend, you will find more and more characters who are becoming your friends and you are absolutely getting into that world. You will forget where you are. That's also one wonder which the, the library does. Why do I call it a wonder? Second thing is that it gives us so much of a knowledge. Why do I call it a wonder? Because it doesn't judge us. It doesn't tell us anything. It doesn't ask us, don't you know? How come? How come? It doesn't say that. It just gives us knowledge. And it makes us very happy when we pick up a nice book. It makes us think when we take a book which makes us think. It makes us do a lot of other things which normally we are not willing to do. Even if it is about a cooking, we suddenly get, oh, we can do this. If it is about some project, Oh, we can do this. So it makes us do wonderful things. It transfers us into a different world. It gives us a lot of friends. It doesn't judge us. So why can't call this as a wonderland? Yeah. And that's why I call the library a wonderland. So this whole journey is how to make a library into a wonderland. That's all. So it's a wonderland library in a school enriches educational experience empower students, contributes to their holistic development. And when they read a book, when they refer a book, they have a kind of a glow which comes because they have learned something new. So how are they doing? Is it that only by going and holding a book? People like me want to hold a book in the hand because that's a thrill. That's a thrill to hold a new book in the hand and that thrill we should give it to the children apart from all those digitization. So let us see how to make this happen. We have multiple libraries, okay, multiple names are there. It's a curated collection of a lot of, I mean, uh, curated collection of resources, typically books, but also includes periodicals, multimedia materials, digital resources, organized for access, use and reference. So we have to keep all this together. They are actually information hubs. It, they offer a wide range of resources to support learning, research and leisure activities. Look at that. The leisure activities are absolutely important apart from research and support learning because when you tell a child that you are going there for learning, the child says, oh my God. But you tell them that we are doing an activity there. Then the child enjoys. Not only the child, we will also enjoy because we are not doing something out of compulsion but the leisure activity is our enjoyment all the time. So that's what we are going to do now. So why library? I asked this question always. I say that humne se pucha. 
So some people gave different answers for me, you know, uh, because hands-on learning builds a strong, builds a stronger brain. So somebody gave me this idea, this word. Somebody said, because you might take an interest in gardening at 3 a.m. See, suddenly when you are reading a book and the book is talking about doing a gardening and you are actually doing multiple things, then suddenly you may take an interest in 3 a.m. You can go to the garden. Yeah, that's what the book reading does to you. Then, because learning starts before kindergarten. Yes, if you have a library, it starts. In fact, learning starts from uh, from mother's tummy then and the mothers read books at the time. So because of Wi-Fi shouldn't require a receipt. If you want to use a Wi-Fi and this Wi-Fi, a free Wi-Fi shouldn't require a receipt. You may not have a free Wi-Fi when you want to learn, but uh, definitely you may have a book in your hand to learn. Because a library card is the most important school supply of all. Without a library card, you can't get into the library, which is a wonderland. So definitely library should be there. And with library card, you can get entry into multiple resource centers. Because it's a 3 a, it's 3 a.m. and you need to read Harry Potter and the cursed child. This is one child told. What will I, if I don't read now, how will I know what happened to the child in Harry Potter? And somebody told me because a little known, because a little known how can make smartphones smarter. Yeah, I'm reading about how to make my smartphone a better one. And a reading, reading is what helping me do a better job with my smartphone. Because students who read during the summer end up on the honor roll in the fall. This is told by somebody from the Western world who are living. They say that if I read more books now, once I go back to school, I will be in the honor call. That's a, one of the things I'm reading for. There's a purpose for it because texts are fine. Look at the spellings. Texts are fine, but seriously, people also need to see real sentences. When you are doing all these texting, when you are doing this messaging, normally you don't use actual real sentences. But no, whenever you are writing, you need to use the real sentences and that's also required. So these are few of the replies I got. But actually, when I compiled it, it fosters love for learning library and supports academic success. Yes, promotes creativity and imagination. Encourages collaboration and social interaction. Develops information literacy skills. See, uh, you must be tell, thinking that why am I talking about why library? If you want to know how to use a library, then you should know why a library. First of all, if there is a library, then the love for learning comes because such attractive books are there. And there are some book readers who, who will behave with an attitude that I read this many books. So you would like to actually beat them by reading those books. This is also actually one of the main reasons that you should have library. And slowly, slowly, the love for learning increases when we are using the library. It supports our academic success. Yeah, the more you read, the more you are, the better you become. And creativity and imagination, I tell you, when you are reading lot and lot of stories of um, Sherlock Holmes, Maybe you land up writing one story of such, uh, which is somewhere equivalent to Sherlock Holmes story. If you are reading a book on poetry, you may write a lot of poems. If you are reading a lot of articles and uh, journals on science, then you may start experimenting. That is what uh, reading does to you. And if you are reading a lot of cookbooks, you may make your entire kitchen into an R&D center. Who knows? And you may become another uh, master chef. Yes. And develop information and literacy skills immediately because the more you read, the more these are developed. Enhances digital literacy. Correct. See, it said no little know how can make a smartphone smarter because first of all, to know how to make our phone work better, to our how our Apple laptop works better, to our, how our other laptop works better, to all other gadgets works better, the more we know, the more we learn about digital literacy. So for that also we need to read. Cultivates a welcoming and inclusive environment. Yes. As I said, when you are reading books, the books are the most inclusive world you have. 
and no other world can be as inclusive as a book. So you need to go to the library, which is an inclusive world by itself. And you, that wonder library may gets you in, I mean, it tracks you into the inclusive environment and supports personal growth and well-being connects with the community correct when you are reading lots of books then you will start getting you will read more and more information the more information you get the more you will be seeing your community with identical issues and you will be getting into problem solving so how to use the library as a wonderland first of all create a wonderland the creating the wonderland for children to come, for teachers to come, it should look visually very appealing. I am not talking about the size, but I am talking about appealing space. It should have very attractive space. It should have a uh, moving space. It should have all the books neatly stacked, listed and the displayed names. And it should also have bright colors, comfortable seating, ergonomy works a lot, interesting displays to capture students' attention. If you have black and white, I remember uh, when we were making uh, one of the syllabus documents, uh, our very, very uh, loved, beloved Joint Secretary, uh, Nima Ma'am told, as it is, nobody touches social studies, so I want all of you to make the document look very attractive. So that is what happens unless until the document is attractive, unless until the book has an attractive color and uh, captions, unless until the display of this is happening, the children will not touch. So we should make it look attractive. And for teachers also, we need to have the space very welcoming. We should have a wel the librarians with a, wel a welcoming smile in the library rather than giving them a stern look and saying that, hello, don't walk in, maintain silence. This is library. Which book are you taking? Rather than that, helping them to pick up the book helping them to make them sit down comfortably, helping them with the actually choice of books. That makes the whole library very inviting. Then curate a wide variety of books, magazines and multimedia resources because you do not know. Each child, each person, each teacher may have a different kinds of choice. Not all will read fiction. Not all will write, read the uh, mm, discoveries not all will know want to know about the science or physics i mean maths or any other informations people need magazines people need uh, story books people need short story books if the book is more than 100 pages there are some people who will not touch it oh my god it is too big so we need to cater to the different variety of books by different authors, it should have magazines, it should have resources, and it should cater to all age groups. That means I also have a three-year-old in my school and an 18-year-old in my school. So my library should have books catering to three-year-old to 18-year-old. Then I also have teachers from 25 to 61. That is me. So this many, this bandwidth of age groups are there so my library should have books catering to this bandwidth of groups then only the library becomes a wonderland and it also should have, have both popular and niche topics to accommodate broad range of preferences we don't know no two people one size doesn't fit all so whosoever reference be is whosoever preferences what we need to allow, uh, give them the opportunity to pick up the book and we want them to come to the library because we call it as a wonderland. Then create an interactive zone. Ma'am, actually we heard that uh, library is a silent zone. How can we have an interactive zone? Keep reading rooms. In the reading rooms, you have to have an interactive corner. You have to have a silent reading corner. You have to have a group discussion corner. You need to have a creative activity corner. You need to have project making corner or center. So the children will choose which area they want to go, which, what are they going to do? What will they do in interactive zones? 
they may pick up a book and they may discuss a review on it they may character uh, discuss the characters there they may think that tomorrow in the assembly we are going to present a uh, small skit on the values we picked up from here or we may represent for a few of the characters in the assembly we don't know they will decide and the teacher who is there will help them and that happens in the library okay and Reading. Some people are very, very, very the oratious readers. They would like to sit in a corner and read. So give them the space. Do not disturb them. And keep study groups. Who would like to sit in group and study? Take the reference material. And we may have group discussions there. Okay. And you can also have creative activities there and project and experiments are happening in the center of this reading room. So you are reading room of the library becomes the most happening place the moment you have a happening place of library everybody would like to be there because there is something which is very attractive happening there then also offer tutoring services study groups and mentorship programs to support the students academic needs in the library that means we need to take the support of the librarian here. Who will be telling them that, okay, do you need a self tutoring service? There is a digital library here. You can actually log in here and you will be seeing this. You want a physical teacher, which subject? We will talk to the respective principal so that that will be happening here. Or we will create a study group peer group studies happens and they will be supported by the librarian to pick up the right resources so they sit in groups and study. Then a peer mentor may be there, a teacher mentor may be there or librarian himself or herself may become a mentor in the library period to support the students academic needs. Normally if you make the child sit in the classroom and tell the child that learn here, your remedial is here the child feels very let down because the same atmosphere. Yesterday in some, uh, this thing I was telling them, normally what happens is whenever we are talking to the students about their academic needs, we tell them like a cycling, that we say that, okay, many of us, we see that many of you may not be doing, many of you may be doing, that we tell them that cycling is very easy, hold the cycle, okay, in your hand, handlebar in your hand and put your, um, left uh, foot onto the left pedal, right foot onto the right pedal, pedal, balance the cycle and pedal it. Cycling has come. Now, the child will be looking at you. You say it's a very simple one. You didn't understand. Hold the cycle with the handlebar. Put your left foot on left pedal, right foot on the right pedal. You can sit on the seat if you want. Balance it and pedal. Cycling has come. The child will not learn because there is nothing which, which is being taught to the child practically. But the same child, if you take him to the library and in the library, first basically give him a kind of a satisfaction. I mean, uh, a self-worth uh, kind of small, small activities telling him, you know, what is actually balancing. You know, you can balance yourself. Now, after getting the child used to that, make the child go through one or two of those digital, digital ways of looking, the making a cycling happen, then take him practically to your ground, the child learns. So the first base happens in the library because the child is not in the same space of learning. Whenever we need to give any academic needs, it is better to do Take them into the Wonderland library. Again, I'm saying your library should be a Wonderland. Take them to the Wonderland library. There you attend with multiple resources which are there. We don't know which will make the child actually feel happy, which makes the child open up, which makes the child learn, but the child learns beautifully there. And you can also give a quiet study area for focused learning and access for reference materials. This is all for intra-learners. Intra-learners do not like to be disturbed. So you can create a small study area for them who will be doing intra-learning. Then 
We can give a designate collaborative spaces to encourage teamwork and group projects, which I said already, provide whiteboards, projectors, and other resources to facilitate brainstorming and knowledge sharing. Now, I request all the librarians who are attending, I know that library is a space which is meant to maintain silence. So please create a study area where they will be talking and discussing. Normally, the silent reading was there at one point of time, and now we need to allow them to discuss. Then only the learning, the discussions will make them read better, do better, and they will be making them collaborate better. So create a space where they can speak to each other for knowledge sharing. Because as in when they get a new idea, they need to share with others. Once they go to the classroom, they are in the fear that they may forget. So please allow them to discuss there. Then for the lower classes especially, create classroom libraries. These are the most interesting thing to happen because especially up to grade one or grade two or grade three, the children are within the classrooms. They don't go much out with a mother teacher or homeroom teacher being there. So if there is a class library, whenever the child wants, the child can go and pick up a book because the attractive books with multiple colors are there attracting the child's eyes. What is something? It's like a toffee there. So the child will start to learn, start to read, start to pick up the book in the classroom library and slowly the child will graduate to go to the library and pick up the book. So classroom libraries are very, very important for the lower classes. Now, how to actually make the classroom library, I'll discuss again later, but you can ask each child to donate one book. So if you have 40 children, you have 40 books in rotation, permutations and combinations, 40 books the children will get to read in a year. That's a big number if you can actually, or 39 books apart from their own book. So that's a big number if they can read in a year. So these classroom libraries help them to read. Second thing we can do with the classroom library is that one child can pick up a book and the child can read loudly and everybody will be listening to the story and later on they can enact the story in the library period. What happens? One child is reading, others are developing listening skills. You can have your ASL practices here. That makes the child not only a, that, a good reader, develop a reading ability, the child's listening ability also improves with this kind of an activity where the child, one child is reading, the others are listening. So everybody will get a, a turn because with their own book and all others when listening, they are actually reading. So reading skill, listening skill and answering and enacting. So speaking skill, their ASL is developed through this particular activity and the child's imagination also goes quite high because they are actually reading a book. So this is also classroom library can do to the children. Then in your library, please do not stick to that age old ways of sitting, but give a variety of options. You can give cozy corners. You don't get scared and worried that how can I give a cozy nook? I have a teenage child and all. See, you, it, you have your own ways and means of controlling them. But a cozy nook, for example, there may be a child who would like to sit in the corner and read a book. It makes no problem. You have to give them that space and you will be monitoring after all. So give that. Then you can keep some bean bags. That will be excellent because the child can fall on the bean bag and do the reading. Standing desk. There are some people who would like to stand and read. And of course, your traditional shape, tables and chairs with circular, square, whatever shapes you have, you can put. And cater to different learning preferences and provide comfortable seated seating for extended reading sessions. Now, in this kind of a seating arrangement, you can have an author talk. And you can have a discussion. You can have a book reading happening by one person and other re others listening. And you can have group discussions happening. So this extended reading sessions can be used if you have such a flexible seating arrangements. Then train the library staff to be friendly, approachable and knowledgeable. Without this, we cannot make a library look like a wonderland. Encourage them 
to provide personalized recommendations and support students in their reading and learning journeys. Normally, they have to support the children. They should be open. They should make the things happen in the library so that the child runs to the library. So your library staff should be extremely friendly and very creative. Refresh the library with new books, displays and decorations regularly. This is a must for a library because if you don't have a library which is refreshed every month, the child will get bored. Same old books I'm seeing because you need to reshuffle them. You need to show them what they have not read, what they have read and where they can go for the new books and where they can look for a new in, uh, reference material. Otherwise, they get very bored. Today's generation get bored in um, drop of a hat. So to keep their um, interest, you should change your entire library to query often. OK, then you have to have seasonal themes current events, topics of interest, all these things to be highlighted everywhere and to keep the space dynamic and relevant. So what is happening outside should be reflecting in your uh, news corner of your library. Yesterday, a new uh, parliament building has been uh, uh, inaugurated with all the new things about our own culture. So your library must be reflecting about it. So when they go for the library, they'll be talking about this building. They will be asking about what is Seagull. Okay, well, who got it? Why did they get it? How did they bring it? And what is this about this Rishi who is being there? What is this about this epic being there? All these questions they should be asking. And if they will be asking only if your library displays it. It should be a hub of current events as well as a dynamic center which is changing very often to attract everybody. Seek input from students and involve them in the library planning and decision making. Our Honorable Secretary Sir was sharing this uh, idea when we were in meeting. This is one of the fantastic ideas actually. You should have your own student committee. And this student library committee should be giving you one kind of their requests, that requisitions. We need these kind of books in the library. And as a principal and librarian, you should be knowing what are good books, what are not good books. If they have given anything which is not suitable or age appropriate, you can veto it. But make them come to that level of giving a recommendation, number one. Number two, how to keep the library? Ask your student committee that how do you want the library to look? Is it looking drab? Can you make it attractive? If you want to make it, make it attractive, what is the budget is involved? Please seek our approval and within the given budget, make it happen and it should be key, all the time looking very, very attractive. They come up with fantastic ideas and they know to work on budget because no parent is giving so much money. They all work on budgets and we also don't give them so much money, but they will work on budgets. It is we who have to give them the liberty at the same time, tell them that this is your limitation. So please make them do this. And a student advisory committee to allow them to contribute to the suggestions for the new books, activities, as I said that, and improvements wherever the improvements must happen. Then creating a Wonderland library is an ongoing process that requires continuous adaptation and improvement, regularly assess students' feedback and adjust offerings accordingly to meet the evolving needs and interests of your student community. Now, it is continuous process. It is that it has to be evolving. It should be continuous and it should be ready to change and it should be most student friendly so that the student uses it for the reading habits. So if this is what your library can do, then how to develop the reading habits. As Sir said just now, that today people are in the world of, um, I mean, uh, social media. Nobody wants to read because it's boring. It is boring to read. That's what they tell. But how to make them touch a book? How to make them read? There is one here. You can see this. It is called Read Along. This is one of the apps you can make them use, which you can see this. I hope you are able to see. Uh, can anyone? Bhasha ko tap kare, jo aap apne ko padna hai. So you can actually 
tap any of these things so that you they will be in whichever language you want them to do then they will take you there english to hindi we can go then they will take you jab aapke bacche kahani zor se padhte hain tab main unko sunti hu aur aavashyakta hone par unki madad karti hu you know you know that it will read along with your children so when it reads along with your children the children will start enjoying this is the first step you can take if those of you who do not know you can take this read along okay then second thing i tell you organize regular events workshops author visits now regular events when i talk about it that you can give class wise a book okay and that should be given by a uh, the english teacher or kannada teacher your language teachers hindi sanskrit whatever is the language teacher should give a book to the children and in the next assembly they have to talk about the book they have to talk about what are the um, positive characters what are the negative characters what can be the best way actually if at all they are the authors how can they actually change the ending of the particular story okay so these are all an event which is based on a story book why should we do this ma'am this is only to improve their asl that is first of all they need to know speaking learning reading and these three will be improved with this and unless until they read they will not be able to actually do their entire teaching learning process i mean entire learning process is dependent on reading and listening so that improves through this then you can of course author visits you can do then book clubs yeah we have multiple clubs so you can have a book club then writing competitions i tell you what we can do with the writing competitions normally we give them an essay writing competition where the child who writes writes the child who doesn't write will not write so what we do in the school i will tell you here what we do is one week we will take it as one story writing week in our school every class first standard to eighth standard we do ninth and tenth we don't touch them much but first to eighth we will take them what we do it is the time of all the language teachers irrespective of the language they go to the classroom once they go to the classroom they will ask the children tell the children we will write a story you will write a story but you should tell what on what theme you want to write a story normally grade 1 they will say that they'll write about animals grade 2 also will write about animals grade 3 would like to write about friends grade 4 onwards they would like to write like famous five who were all doing some thrilling all those kind of uh, adventurous stories grade 7 onwards they would like to write about crime stories you say yes very good very good now in your story how many who will be the i mean how many characters will be there and what is the characteristic of each character so whatever they are saying you will have some child writing two to three children writing that and you say okay tomorrow when i come we are going to write a story in this session it need not have to be a 100 page story it can be only a 10 page story 20 page story whatever in your 40 minutes you can write so next day when you go you will pick up some children who are very good at writing you tell them you will keep writing but you will also contribute to the story now you tell them okay now we have taken one story and i will take a easier story so that i can i will not be taking much of your time so i have done this with the first standard so first standard want to write about animals so i said okay they said that they want to write about a puppy a kitten okay and about a crow which and then the forgetful cheetah and then the forgetful tiger and a very wise cheetah then i said okay we will do this now we will start the teacher was writing so i was making them do the whole storytelling then i said i will start the story but each one of you will add one one line to the story they all accepted so i started once upon a time there was a village and in the village i stopped and i told the first boy you tell what happened in the village so he said in the village lived one puppy and one kitten okay what happened next child the next to the village there is a forest very good third child what happened in the forest lived one very helpful cheetah fourth child the in the forest lived one very forgetful tiger 
Six, fifth child in the forest lived that one crow which flew to village and the forest. Then now the story started going. The puppy and the kitten became very close friends. Every day they will go out and play. And one day what happened? So I asked this question, one day what happened? So then they said that the puppy and kitten went off into the forest without telling their parents. So in the forest what happened? The tiger caught hold of this kitten and took the kitten into its cave thinking it is its own cub. Now the puppy is lost. Then what happened? Now puppy was very worried. It started crying. Then the crow came and asked, what happened? So the puppy said, my friend is lost like this. The tiger took away. So then the crow said, go and ask the cheetah. It is a very nice cheetah. It will give you a good advice. So the puppy went to the cheetah. Cheetah said, very simple. Tell your kitten friend to say meow. Then tiger will know it's a forgetful tiger. Okay. So this <laughs> puppy went near the cave and whispered to the kitten, say meow. So the kitten said me. Then immediately tiger thought that achacho, I brought a kitten thinking my cub. So it hit the cub, go back. So the cub came out. Now, this all story told by first standard children, it happened in my school. I, I have the story book till now. Then <laughs> what happened? Very good. They said thank you to the cheetah. Then they said thank you to the crow and they came back home. I said very good. The story is over. Then one child said no ma'am, story is not at over. Why? Because we did not give a title. Very good. Give a title. Then they said ma'am, we will call it as friends in help. I said very good. Friend in help. Then another child said, the story is not yet over. Where is the moral? I said, very good. Tell me what is the moral? Don't go to forest without telling parents. I said, fantastic. Write the moral also. Now, the children who could write well, they wrote the story on small, small chart papers. The children who could draw the way they could draw, they have drawn it on a chart paper. And the teacher wrote everybody's name, whoever has contributed. That means the whole class. And one book for the library, which is written by the children, was ready. Yes, we have 300 such books in my school, which are written in Kannada, which are written in English, which are written in Hindi, and even in Sanskrit, we have those books. This is one thing we do so that children will actually enjoy not only telling reading books, but they'll also write the books. Then we call it something called a dear week. That means drop everything and read. So the dear week in the assembly, the whole school, whatever they are doing, that 15 minutes, they should stop everything and read. And the one week, everybody will be reading that 15 minutes. After that, they will be giving their reviews in the assembly. How was that 15 minute reading happened that one week? So this is one of the very good activities we can do. And this has enhanced our reading so well. Our third one, I'll tell you, which we have in which enhanced our uh, reading is our proficiency. Initially, we had a terrible problem of children not reading at all. Then we came up with one idea that we will make children read three books per every two months and they have to write a review. And based on the review, we will give three more books. So if any child completes nine books a year, they will get a proficiency certificate because, and to assess whether they have really read, we'll ask them to write a review on the book. After six months, we understood that the children are going to Google and getting the entire review and re replicating it. So we thought this is not the way. They are not reading, they are just replicating that. So what we did is we created a small assessment on this book they read age appropriate assessment. It will have one small comprehension from the same book and it will have some kind of a character analysis of from the same book. It will have a proposed ending of the same book so that what happened, the ones who clear the first level will be sent to the second level. Another three books are given. If they clear the second level, they will be going to the third level. And if they finish the third level nine books, they'll be given a proficiency certificate, which will be talking about as far as reading is concerned, they are almost two credits above the class. This has enhanced the reading so much in the school. Today we have got 72 authors, student authors, whose books are being written and sold in the Amazon. I'll show you the video later. 
Apart from that, create your own digital library if you have the resources. I'll show you. This is done by my uh, librarian, Mr. Nasser, during the uh, pandemic. Uh, since the children were not able to do the reading, he came up with this idea and he did this. The uh, entire credit of this uh, digital library goes to our librarian, Nasser. I'm taking you to this. You can see this. And if you see this of entire, I think, I hope all of you are able to see, it has everything. You can talk about it, study materials, online books, yes. And you see the useful links from here, e-newspapers here, new arrivals are here, career magazines are here, and it talks about ICT initiatives of NCRT, and it talks about e-books for kids, and it also shows you how many children have actually entered, visited this entire, you can see 29,340 visitors for this particular website that is our digital library. And it has everything about library, digital library, online books, holy books, career resources, library events, resources centers, and kids corner. So all these things have its own, you can see teachers and students. And you want to go to gallery, photo gallery, video gallery. Okay, home, you want, I will just show you the resource, teacher's resource. So you can see which subject you want to know. And who's all, what are all the subjects they want the resources. The teachers go and inform Mr. Nasser and Nasser immediately puts it here that how, how he can create that. So for every subject, same way if it is for the uh, students, there is a student resource also here. You can go to the student resource. So student resource, whatever the students ask, you can see this here. So, and I'm, I am so happy. This is maximum used by our students, maximum used by our teachers. And this kind of a library uh, helped our children to read, to get associated with library even during the pandemic. Then the next one is that read along with expression. When we are reading with the children, then we need to have some kind of an emotion attached. We need to read with them and we need to bring in the characters with emotion. So what happens is they will also become part of that book. They will have this kind of a excellent uh, involvement in the book and then they will start enjoying reading that. So if you want to inculcate reading, start with read along, which is very, very important. Then you go to this website where that will make them read or you can make your teachers read along with the students with expressions. I always say that when we are reading a poem or when we are reading a prose, you have to add a little bit of an expression to it so that the child will get transformed into that world. So a little bit of a dramatization makes the child touch the book, make the child read the book. Then definitely dear weeks will be happening because this dear week makes the child drop everything and read at that moment. Initially, they want to do. They will act as though they are doing. But over a period of time, since they need to go on to that stage, since they need to explain what they have done that period, they will start reading. Proficiency initially, they won't read. But over a period of time, when somebody else is getting the credits, when somebody else is getting the certificates, they will all get into it. Definitely, if you have a resource, I tell you that digital library is one of the best resource for any one of us can do this particular era because that makes everyone log into the library from wherever they are. So apart from this, what I would like to say, tell you is that if at all you do not have enough of sources and resource, you have a very limited resource, you have some kind of a crunch, you don't need to worry about it. Create a classroom library, okay, if you have a space constraint. Make each child donate one book that is for on school to school on special days, World Library Day. Let all children donate one book to the school. And the book should be of, you have to tell them what kind of a book they should bring. And second thing is that 
on reading day they can give you one book on independence day they can give you a book and on birthdays their own birthdays they can give a book and on birthdays they can have a dear time where everybody will be reading okay and once they give you this books imagine if you have 400 children you have got 400 books into four main events 800 books you have got but it is up to you what you are asking them and then it is up to you how you are arranging them and it is up to you how you are presenting them to make the reading happen. It is easier to say it cannot happen but once you take it up you will see how well your library is working. Then create resources like make students write stories which I said and make handwritten books our student book library like what we do now is we have this handwritten book library no? then we also have now our student author library as i said that we have 72 authors in our school whose books are being sold in amazon so we have one more like one more corner where our own student authors are there so you create that that makes other children get inspired and they will start write, reading and writing Anyone wants to become an author, they cannot become an author without reading. They have to read first, then only they can become an author. If they are a, want to become a poet, they have to first read poems, then only they can become a poet. Because that is an inspiration to become. So we have to have the reading to become authors, to become poets, or to become the best doctors or the best professionals across the world. And create a donate a book week, month and involve the stakeholders to generate resources. Now here, it's not the children. We will invite our stakeholders, that is the parents and teachers. And what we will do is this entire week, I'm keeping two big cartons outside. All we want you to do is please give a second hand book. You have finished reading, please give that book. But please ensure that we want only book of this content, book of this nature I don't want because I need to keep age appropriate books. So mention that and it is not a textual matter that I will give you my old child, old textbooks of my child. No, story books we need, we need inspirational books, we need journals, we need reference books. So ask them and label the boxes if it is a referral book you will reference book put it in this carton if it is a story book put it in this carton so that you will not spend time in segregating you will receive that and you give them uh, one particular time saying that that particular class or the child who collects maximum number of books will be rewarded or recog recognized during assembly we are doing for somebody else. Why don't we do for our own library? Then our libraries will become one of the fantastic happening things. Our libraries will become a place where you will have a lot of collection of books because every child, every one of us, whether it is a teacher or a principal or a library, every one of us, we need one uh, reward. So that recognition and reward works, works a lot. And Start with small steps. Do not say that at a stretch I want to make a big library. Start with a small one and go for a big one. And you can meet organizations like Rotary Alliance and all. They will support because I know I know that uh, how Rotary helps the schools to build uh, libraries, especially the schools with limited resources. And I know how Lions Club helps them and they, they get you the funds. They will get you the entire support system so that you can run a library. But once you make a library, ensure that the library is in the best presented manner, presentable manner, and your reading is happening. And if you want the reading to happen, Please ensure that that reading should become an enjoyable, most enjoyable uh, activity. The reading cannot become a monotonous activity. Then only the child will be able to read well. Otherwise, the child will start yawning. I don't know how many of you are yawning, listening to me for past 50 minutes because I'm going on talking. I can't meet you otherwise. So, but if you want a child to actually build a reading habit then it's a great journey and that journey happens only if you make it the whole small big whatever library you have as a wonderland then the learning happens so i will take you to two of my best uh, the things one is this big book reviews so you can see this this is a book review how 
book reviews are happening. These all have improved our reading uh, skills of our children. So this is Sai Sarvajit has done this. Okay, Nicola. I mean, uh, this is done by Kushagra Sagar. Okay, and Rachana has done this. You can see this. Adit, this is done by Aditi's. I mean, Aditya and uh, Bhavishya. Okay, you can see this famous five. So this kind of book reviews will actually when it is coming into a portal where so many people can see the children are getting absolutely thrilled and the children are feeling so happy that wow we can actually read and we can also write the reading leads to writing i'll take you to one more this thing i want all of you to see this Shalini's book is the major, I mean, maximum, um, I mean, sold books, in fact, uh, in Amazon. So she was also rewarded for that. And uh, this is how we have developed the reading habits and reading habits went to writing habits of the children. 
of course, when I look at strength of um, 2,500 children and uh, 72 children writing, yeah, we are looking at a bigger number later. But uh, again, as we, as I said, that start uh, small, then you can reach higher goals. And it will not happen on a, in a single day. It will not happen in a year. It will take a long time for us to reach to the stage and to make the children understand because today it is a completely a world of... Uh, uh, digital digital world and everything happens very fast they do not get anything to uh, they feel that sitting and reading is a biggest uh, challenge for anyone they think that it is boring this is extremely boring uh, even if you read it is boring if i read it is boring so taking them to a book is a very very difficult thing so uh, this is how we tried again i'm saying first we started with read along then we went to uh, completely make a story of your own because that for that the children have to read. Then we went to dear, uh, drop everything and read weeks. Of course, simultaneously our uh, digital libraries have come up and we also went for read along during the uh, COVID time. Then this entire process, there is one more thing we do it in our language rooms, which I would like to share before I uh, conclude. Normally, when we go for our language, our language is uh, learning is done through a different way of uh, normally, the, not the regular way. What we do is that whatever is the uh, literature part of it, the teacher makes the child actually read by themselves and identify the new words. The words the child is not familiar. The child will do it. It is not the teacher. Teacher is only a facilitator. Then the teacher says that if you have identified, can you find the meanings? Can you find the meanings in the dictionary? The child teacher helps the child to find the meanings. Once the whole class does this, the teacher says, okay, now what are how many new words are there in this particular passage? Okay, very good. So you found the meanings. What are the meaning? Very good. Can we make sentences with it? Very good. Now, today you go home and you will find, you will write a small story with this five or ten words and come back tomorrow. You have to write the story. To write that, the child needs to reread the whole passage. Yeah. And the child needs to understand the meaning. Next day, the child came back. Now the teacher says, okay, there is a problem with grammar here, problem with grammar. So we will learn this grammar here. Then when the teacher is giving this kind of a complete learning through, self-learning through the passages of literature, the child is automatically reading. When the child is reading by himself or herself, they are not dependent on the teacher to read except for correcting the pronunciation whichever language it can be hindi it can be sanskrit it can be kannada french english anything where the teacher's role is coming here is standing like a potter the potter who keeps the hand and molds but the otherwise the wheel is moving by itself like that we the teacher stands and the child is reading normally if the teacher reads and the child listens. The whole learning responsibility, reading responsibility has fallen on the teacher. Now we reversed it. The moment we reversed it, now the children are reading by themselves. The moment they are doing this, automatically the reading habits are increasing. But again, I tell you, nothing happens over a day. It's all baby steps we have to take. And when we take the baby steps, there will be n number of people who tell us it will not happen. There will be 200 challenges to tell you that no, 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 this is all good theoretically, practically it doesn't happen. But that is the reason to prove that practically it happens only I have shared our best practices that how it is happening. But only thing is we never gave up. We never said that, no, it doesn't happen. When somebody said, we said, TK happens or not happens, we will go on trying. So, um, dear all, thank you. In fact, uh, this is what I want to share with you. And uh, please, what is the delay? You can start today. And if you are already doing, fantastic. Keep doing it because we need to take the child back to reading. And thank you very much for this. And... Um, if you have any questions, uh, Meenakshi, can we take uh, questions? Uh, ma'am, they will write to us on the email ID which is given in the circular, ma'am. 
Okay, so there are no questions. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so do you want me to recapitulate once again so that we can because the content is done? I'll recapitulate once again. Sure, ma'am. Okay, thank you. So uh, thank you all for listening. But I would like to tell you all, please, if you want to make your library uh, a fantastic wonderland, keep a, a very good visually appealing space. Without that, it doesn't happen. It should have a good ergonomy. It should have bright colors, comfortable seating. You should have a wide variety of books catering to the lowest, youngest age to the senior most, that is your principal or your chairman, whoever is the senior most in that school. So for all of them, the gamut should be there. And those books should have different interests. It should be, it should not be only the story books, but it can have multiple genres, genres of stories, and then you should have journals, then you should have referrals, then you should have magazines, and all best and age appropriate should be there. And then, of course, incorporate interactive uh, zones because within the library, the library cannot be a silent place all the time. There should be a place where the children can sit, discuss uh, and analyze the characters. And when they are reading, they can also say that, oh, oh, oh I did not like this kind of an editing. I would have done a better job, that kind of discussion. So keep a reading room so that that reading room becomes a place of a hub of activities inclusive of creating a fantastic different kinds of a seating arrangement a cozy corner can be given up i mean bean bags can be given standing uh, and reading kind of a uh, podiums can be given and you can have your regular seating arrangements and you should have your digital library so that the children who are not interested in holding a book can go to the digital library and do that and this kind of an ambience when you are setting up in your school then what happens classroom libraries you can put up because classroom libraries will make the little ones take to the book first because today a newborn is there and to feed the newborn from fifth month the mother has to show the uh, mobile then only the newborn is eating so the newborns are also away from the books if we want to take them back to the books then we should have a classroom library the classroom library should be very attractive you can ask the children to con donate a book so that you'll have minimum 40 books if your school is with 25 like covers you'll have 25 books and that's a good enough book number for a class of two or one to read and to discuss and you can have a read along like the teacher the teacher can make one child read and all others listen and your asl also hap happens with that and um, apart from this refresh your library looks up with the new books displays and other things this is very very important and uh, Encourage one point I forgot to tell you, please. This is a request to all the uh, science maths teachers who are listening or not listening. Please don't take away the library period from them. Normally it happens, maths teachers will say that what will you do sitting in the library or uh, I mean physical education, games, come to the maths class, don't do that. How HP is compulsory now, your library is a compulsory period. They should go to the library. Library is a learning period. It is not a non-scholastic period. Normally we make a lot of compromise with the library. It should not happen. Library is a fantastic learning tool. So we should ensure that the learning tool is being used and utilized. Then keep your student committees, very active student committees. And when you're making the student committees, ensure that there are authors there, there are readers there, there are people who are contributing and have them give you the reviews give them give them give you suggestions make them budget you are the one who is approving everything but they will learn their entire financial literacy apart from making a library happen and their it is their own baby so that they will bring in their own friends to that library so that is how the student community will enhance the usage of the library then of course as i said that organize regular events and host book clubs call the writers, authors, and when authors come and speak, they the children will get very thrilled. Then if your own uh, story writing sessions are happening, 
डिस्प्ले ऑल दोज बुक्स टू योर पेरेंट्स योर स्कूल स्टेक होल्डर्स पेरेंट कम्युनिटी रिटर्न बाय देयर ओन चिल्ड्रन सो दे विल आल्सो गेट वेरी थ्रिल्ड अबाउट इट एंड दैट इज हाउ यू आर डेवलपिंग रीडिंग एंड राइटिंग बोथ टू राइट एनीथिंग यू नीड टू हैव रीडिंग एंड यू कैन हैव लॉट ऑफ स्टोरी टेलिंग सेशंस एंड व्हेन यू हैव अ स्टोरी टेलिंग सेशंस एंड रीडिंग सेशंस keep some teacher who can read or tell with lot of um, emotions you know she can put in all those dramatization to the stories so that it happens very very effectively of course use the digital libraries and then give project works where you have the with the books which are available in your library and if you do not have sources you can take the support of multiple like donate a book you can take you can ask your uh, uh, like i mean uh, rotary or uh, lions club or you can ask your children and parents to donate for your library a small room is enough but how well you kept it is what matters so this is what and of course uh, there are reviews about uh, it, please make them write the review and start it today thank you very much for being very very good uh, listeners and uh, thank you very much thank you ma'am for giving us an insight into the role of libraries in fostering a love for reading and nurturing lifelong learners we are truly grateful for the impact you have made through your talk and we also look forward to seeing the positive changes it will bring in the community thank you once again ma'am in addition to the same i would also like to thank dr ram shankar sir director training for his time to time guidance and support dr sandeep kumar jain sir joint secretary training shrimati tushara ma'am under secretary training shrimati sudesh kulia ma'am under secretary it training unit all the principals teachers of esteem schools all the coe heads of the board and all the staff who is attending the webinar for today i'm sure that by seeing today's webinar and listening to the same everybody will definitely inculcate reading reading habits among themselves thank you once again thank you so much for all of you thank you sir for giving this opportunity hope i have done a little bit of a contribution thanks a lot thank you ma'am thank you so much once again the program is over thank you